Hey guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Health Pro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you care too, make sure to subscribe because when you're here, you're family. Wait, that's already taken? And if you care too, make sure to subscribe so you can become a part of the click. No, we have fun here. So for today's video, I wanted to do my version of the don't be basic concept. So what I've been seeing going around on YouTube is uh, different people would make different suggestions of bags or other accessories and it would be instead of this bag, get this bag, but it's kind of like a carbon copy of the same bag from just like either a different brand or a lesser known brand or something like that. But it still is kind of basic. So what I wanted to offer was some suggestions of bags that maybe kept like the same vibe, but then they either had like an interesting detail to them or maybe a slightly different silhouette or just something that makes them stand out. Because you know, when you're part of the clique, you love to stand out, right? So any of the bags I talk about, if they're still available, I'm gonna put links in the description so you can see them. All right, so let's get started. So for the first one, I wanted to give just like a little appetizer, a little bit of taste for like what I'm kind of talking about, right? So Gucci recently dropped a kind of like an archival bag that Alessandro Michele like loved and reworked and made it his own in a way called the Bamboo Top Handle 1947. There's the main version of the bag where it's this beautiful like soft kind of rounded shape with a bamboo top handle and then a strap. Um, a turn lock closure also made out of bamboo and it really is a beautiful bag. But what I wanted to offer were these two. The first one is of course it's a very similar bag. Uh, the main difference is that the hardware is silver, but it still has that bamboo top handle and the bamboo turn lock closure. This strap is leather and then it has a horse bit detail as well as like this extra little strappy flappy of leather that I think offers a nice little bit of a, a more of a designed aspect to a shoulder strap, which you don't often really see when it comes to like these kinds of bags. Oftentimes I find that a lot of luxury bags, the strap is kind of this like throwaway element, even though it's kind of one of the first impressions you get of the bag, right? Because when you're looking at someone's face, then you go to their shoulder where the strap is, and then you see the rest of the bag. But for this instance, I think it's beautiful because there is design and there is a lot more detailing than what you would normally expect from a bag. On the other hand, there is another version of this. While it still has the bamboo turn lock, it instead of the bamboo like curved top handle, it has like equestrian like short whip, like a riding crop type handle. And I think it's beautiful. So this actually came from the Gucci Aria collection, which at this point it has been out for a while, but I still had no idea this bag actually went into production and I love it. And if I had $6,000, I would buy it. But I don't. So that was just a little taste of kind of the concept I wanted to go off of, right? So the next five bags are actually going to be the bag that is a, not iconic, but a very popular bag right now. And then my suggestion is definitely going to come from like well-known brands, but maybe I'm not seeing the same kind of attention that some of these more popular bags are getting. So for the first one on the basic side is the Prada Reedition 2000. It's that little nylon shoulder bag that everyone knows and loves. The one that's very much, of course, a reedition from Y2K where everyone carried these little tiny bags around. What I have to offer is a proposition. I don't know what that is. So the recommendation I have, if you love that style of bag, but you want something with a little bit more flavor, something more funky, is actually the Half Moon Bag by The Row. The Row for the Uninitiated is actually a fashion house by the Olsen twins, so Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. I love them. I love them so much. The Row is very well known for their understated luxury. It's kind of one of those brands like Loro Piano that's like, oh, if you know, you know. If you're rich, you're rich. I don't know. But still, they create very beautiful silhouettes that are pretty conventional, but oftentimes they have a bit of a twist or something special in one way or another. So as you can see, it still is a shoulder bag. It still has the same kind of style and look to it. But instead of nylon, this one is made out of leather, which I know for a lot of people adds that value. But most importantly to me is there's that kind of asymmetrical dip that the bag has. 
and it adds a lot of interest, I think. So instead of it being this very conventional shape, and more of this like basic bag shape. It turns into something that's a bit more sculptural, a little bit more fluid, and has a bit more movement. And I think that alone is something that pushes the bag up without being too crazy or too different. All right, so that was the first bag. So you see what I mean? It's like, I'm trying to give you a little bit more like, wah, 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 a little bit more, oh, that's unexpected. Like what I want to give is instead of like, oh, here's a tote bag, but instead of LVs on it, there's Vs or something. For me, those bags have like very similar vibes. One just has a little bit more movement, a little bit more fluidity, and I think that makes it a little bit more interesting than the other. The next bag I wanted to talk about is something very newly beloved to me, actually, the Balenciaga Hourglass bag. So we know and love this bag as this very structural, architectural bag that it lifts itself up and gives itself a little bit of verticality despite it being such a horizontal bag. It has a top handle and a shoulder strap along with, of course, a nice flap opening. So my suggestion for this one is something called the Distortion Bag from Acne Studios. So Acne is actually a house that's from Sweden, I think. So hey, wherever you are, Stockholm. But they're known for being like very minimalist as well, kind of similar to how the row is, but they offer very beautiful, luxurious pieces that are pretty minimal with a little bit of a twist sometimes, right? So what they offer in the distortion is again, a top handle bag that has a shoulder strap, but it has those kind of architectural lines and details, but rather than it being focused in symmetry and a little bit of this curvilinear base action, we're getting something that looks like someone put it into Photoshop and like skewed it, distorted it, tweaked it, and made it something almost unusable looking. But for me, what I love about this is that if you love the Balenciaga Hourglass, you're not afraid of being edgy. You love pushing the boundaries a little bit and you love showing off and making a statement. And that's what you can do with this bag as well. If you have this bag, it's kind of like you have a bag that like a kid drew or something in like the best way possible. And I think for me, that's what I love about it. It seems so irreverent and aloof and it really doesn't care. It's just, oh, let's just put a crooked bag out and see who buys it. I might. Either way, I love both. So for this next one, I have a little bit of a weird suggestion. Stick with me. So we have the Loewe basket bag, which we know and love. It's that woven rattan with the leather details, leather strap as well. It's just a big open <laughs> compartment, a big, I don't know, it's a bag. It's just a, a giant bucket, basically. It got so big over the past couple years, especially when we're talking about going to the beach and doing holiday things. Summer holiday. I'm in Europe. That's just how I talk now. <laughs> Everyone knows it and loves it. It feels very beachy and fun. Okay, you're still with me? Okay. There is a basket bag from Balenciaga called the Mag, and it's made out of thermoplasticized, thermoformed leather. So basically what the shape of this bag is, it kind of looks like a basket that you would get from the grocery store. And I think that's the magic of it really. So of course, while the Loewe basket bag has this like beachy, super casual feeling, the mag basket bag from Balenciaga has, uh, it's definitely a casual feeling, but maybe in a different way. Instead of taking it to the beach, you take it to the market, which like, I mean, you would take the basket bag to the market. Why not take a grocery basket to the market, huh? My favorite thing about this bag is actually that they took kind of the trope of these basket bags being woven material meant for the beach or farmer's markets or something like that. And they kind of turned it into something so mundane and related it to a chore that I feel like most people hate doing. So instead of this holiday feel, you get this kind of mundane feel and they kind of flipped the idea of a basket bag. I think it's hilarious, but also very smart. So kudos to them. All right, let's move on. So the next bag I wanted to talk about is the Bottega Veneta Mini Jody bag. Um, it's just this little, I guess you'd call it a top handle. It's just this tiny little thing made out of typically interwoven leather in their interaccio pattern, texture, material. 
but we know it's been everywhere. Everyone sung its praises. We know that uh, despite how adorable the bag is, there are uh, a couple of challenges when it comes to maybe a difficult zipper when you're trying to get into the bag. At least that's what I've heard. So what I wanted to offer is a really cute top handle with a difficult looking zipper. And that brings us to the Caperni Melted Swipe. So this one, while it has a completely different structure from the Bottega Veneta bag, it still has that same characteristic of you hold it by the handle. I think this one you can actually wear it on your shoulder, but still it has this same kind of like rounded zipper, which I can't imagine being the most convenient. But ideally what I wanted to show was the shape and how it carries the same kind of rounded feeling but then still giving a little bit more oomph in the actual form of the bag. Now don't get me wrong, I think the Mini Jody is adorable, but at this rate with how many people have it, if you want to like stand out a little, I think the Caperni is definitely the way to go. And if that melted is like way too crazy for you, they do have just a regular swipe, which is just like an oval, which is still really cute as well. All right. Last bag. For this last bag, I wanted to talk about another Bottega bag. So, <laughs> so this one's a little bit of a weird one. So of course we have the pouch and we know it and love it. They actually came out with one in a new material that looks like, like a mop, like a loofah, like a Swiffer. Like it looks like it's meant to clean and I love it. It has these polyester like curly cues of fabric all over it that makes it look like one of those like wiping duster things, which I think is beautiful but what i have to offer is the loabe flamenco in blue mongolian goat so as you can see here i'm still giving you that clutch action this one also has a crossbody strap moment but then we're still keeping on with that theme of this insane fluffy fuzzy blue material so you can you know have your cookie monster and love him too so while I personally would have to go with the Bottega mini pouch in that like bobbly fabric material because it's synthetic. I'm allergic to anything like warm and fuzzy. How could you not, how could you not want that Loewe Flamenco tote in this like cookie monster material? Like if you have this bag, you could basically just be cradling cookie monster all day. Like, oh, oh wait, he likes vegetables now. Canceled. Okay. All right. And those are my suggestions on how to, wait, how to don't not be basic. All right, so those are my recommendations. Hopefully you found those interesting. I tried to make sure that the recommendations I were giving for sure had the same vibe as the bag. And I think, I think that comes through. Let me know in the comments if you think that those recommendations don't make sense. Or let me know if you have either the basic or the recommended bag. Let me know. I love to hear people talk about things they love. So, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time, how, how do I not be basic? Oh, this video just taught me. Uh.